All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Adam Spires. I'm a software engineer at SUSE, and I'm going to give you a whirlwind intro to Crowbar. And my email address is there in case you have any questions after. Do feel free to get in touch. What is Crowbar? Uh, well, that's what a, a crowbar looks like in real life. Obviously, that's not a piece of software. Um, to us, it's the way of getting from this, a bunch of hardware in boxes, to this, opening up the boxes, uh, unpacking everything, getting it in a rack, getting it ready to power on, getting it cabled up, and then getting it to this famous picture that is in every OpenStack presentation everywhere, um, which is it's an out-of-date slide. But you get the idea. Setting up OpenStack from scratch, it, we all know it's a difficult thing. So Crowbar is a tool for taking you that, in that whole journey. Uh, so more specifically, it's an open source platform uh, for provisioning servers from bare metal. It's got a web interface. It's got a command line interface. And it's got a REST API. It does hardware discovery inventory. Uh, it's very network aware. It can cope with all kinds of different uh, net network environments and uh, do flexible uh, adaptive installations based on whatever network you have. You can do OS installation from bare metal using Pixie, um, or you can install your uh, OS by yourself and then layer the agents and other software and OpenStack on top of that. Uh, it uses configuration management. Uh, currently, it's, it uses Chef. Uh, in the future, it could maybe be extended to other things. Um, but it's a, a, con a convergent model of configuration management. And uh, Crowbar isn't, doesn't have to be just about OpenStack. Uh, in the past, it has deployed other things uh, like Hadoop and other workloads. But very much the focus these days is for deploying OpenStack in enterprise environments. Um, production level clouds. Uh, so the code has been around since 2011. And uh, uh, the company I work for, SUSE, has invested very heavily into it. And uh, other companies in the community have contributed as well. And um, it, it serves as the basis for our OpenStack product, uh, which is called SUSE OpenStack Cloud. So we're very much uh, invested in this and uh, keen to see it go forwards. Uh, so th these are just a few of the features that it offers in terms of uh, OpenStack installation. There are a lot more, um, but these are some of the highlights. Uh, Multi-hypervisor support, high availability, uh, Ceph, and unattended installs, which I can speak a, a bit more about in uh, a few minutes. And I, so I don't, I don't like to boast. Nor I'm, I'm a typical engineer. I'm not a marketing guy. but. SUSE is famous for being uh, inventing great stuff, doing good engineering. That we have German headquarters, so typical German engineering stereotypes apply. We come up with really great stuff, and then we don't tell anyone about it. Uh, and Crowbar is a great example of that. That it's really nice, very powerful software, but very few people really know about it. It doesn't have the same kind of buzz, maybe, as something like Ansible, but it really is mature and, and can do all kinds of things that a lot of the other solutions out there can't do. So we have customers in production, like BMW, for example. Um, and we also uh, have won uh, the, the Rule the Stack competition at the, the previous three uh, competitions, actually. And the crowbar was used in two of the prize-winning entries. Um, for, for that. So I just wanted to, normally I don't like to boast, but I just wanted to mention that just to prove to you this stuff really does work. And it, it is really quite impressive what it's capable of. And um, this is more about praising the software rather than praising the winners of this competition, which happened to include me. <laughs> um, so in Paris, we managed to deploy a, a six node highly available cloud in 53 minutes. And then it went through stress testing by one of the judges and passed a whole load of tests on high availability, and we won a, a prize for that. And no one else even managed to deploy OpenStack, let alone um, uh, have it go through the high availability stress testing. And then in Vancouver, um, we we off the first entry of the competition. The the winning entry was done using part of our product, but without Crowbar. Uh, which, and the deployment was completed in 
minus 10 minutes because there were time bonuses and the bonuses were greater than the time it took to deploy. Um, but the second uh, uh, award for that competition uh, went to us using our product, using Crowbar. And again, we deployed a six node cloud and it was quicker this time because we didn't do HA, but we did some other, uh, other things. And again, we were significantly ahead of the competition. So apologies for the boasting, I don't like to do it, but I do think Crowbar is a really cool technology that very few people know about, so um, it's, it's worth spreading the news a bit. Uh, I don't have much time to go into the, the details, but this is basically the architecture. It's uh, an application running on an administrative server. It's a fairly typical deployment architecture. You have the, you know, the admin node. Um, which provides your administrative interfaces, the web um, interface, the REST API, the command line, the core engine, the backing database, and then it, it also acts as the Pixie um, DHCP, NTP, DNS install server. Um, Auto Yast is SUSE's version of, um, it's a bit like you know Kickstart or that kind of thing for Pixie-based OS installs. And then we have these things called uh, bar clamps, which are really plugins. So it's an extensible architecture, and you can. Uh, we have cases where we've added new new bar clamp plugins to support new uh, features from particular hardware vendors, for example. But it could really be extended in whatever way you want. And the uh, admin server talks to the client nodes and takes care of um, hardware inventory discovery. Uh, deploying the operating system. The, the hardware discovery operates through this custom boot Im image, um, which we call a sledgehammer for some reason. That's kind of a historical thing. We have, so the project has some slightly strange names, but after a while you stop noticing those. Um, and yeah, and then so once you've deployed all the hardware and the OS, then you deploy OpenStack on top. Uh, in case you're wondering if you're not a native English speaker, what, what is a bar clamp? That's what it looks like in real life. But for in Crowbar, it, it just means a plug-in, essentially. And that's a sledgehammer. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a feature that I added uh, a while ago, which has come in really handy and actually was a key part of us being able to win these, these two uh, competitions, was uh, fully automated deployment. So you can build a whole cloud um, with very little more than um, a YAML file uh, which says how you want to install OpenStack. Here's an example of the Cinder configuration, very simple Cinder thing um, that actually I think we used probably that one for the Paris competition more or less. Um, just has a simple local backend as a, a file. And you can see at the bottom there uh, it's saying, okay, we're going to deploy the Cinder controller to a whole cluster and then it just takes care of all the clustering for you automatically and makes it highly available. And then, the, in this case, the Cinder volume um, service goes on, on one of the compute nodes. Um, but that could be whatever you, you want. So that's really nice. Um, there's also um, a, a similar configuration file that, that takes care of things like different network environments. Um, so depending on what VLANs and networks you have you, and how many interfaces your, your machines have, you can just configure that, and it will do everything automatically. Um, for example, if you want a, a bonded interfaces or, or two, two pairs of bonded interfaces, and then you want one to be on the storage network and one on the tenant network, it, whatever you want to do, it's, it's generally possible just by tweaking some of these files. Uh, if you want to try it out, again, we're very bad at, at making people aware that it's easy to try out, but it is easy to try out. Um, so there are various ways. Probably the simplest is we have a website, which I've helpfully not put the URL up on this slide. Um, this is from susastudio.com. If you go to susastudio.com slash gallery, um, and I can give you these URLs afterwards uh, if, if you want. I, sorry, I, I should have put some URLs on there. Um, but there's an appliance here, and you can just download this as an ISO, for example, install it onto physical hardware, on, install it onto virtual, and very quickly you will have an administrative server up and running, and then you can go through the process of deploying OpenStack onto virtual machines, physical machines, whatever you want. And there's a, there's a full guide explaining step-by-step step how, to, how to try that out. Um, 
the, the code is all on GitHub. This is the home page. Actually, yeah, so I, I did put the URL. So all the links you need should be on this home page. And if there's something you're missing, please uh, feel free to email me. And um, there's the GitHub repository. Uh, that's not a good starting point. I, I would recommend that you uh, go to the, the home page or the appliance. Um, or, ah, I thought I had a slide for the, uh, we also have a Google group called Crowbar. Not very surprising. Um, so you can also join that. And we have an IRC channel um, called uh, Crowbar on Freenode. So again, there's plenty of places to communicate with us. Um, and that's pretty much it. I thought about doing a demo. Um, but I, I realized that in the time we have, it probably wasn't enough. But if you want a demo, I uh, would be more than happy to arrange that for anyone who's interested. Um, so yeah, that's all I have. Maybe that was too quick. No? OK. Any, any